All right, good evening, everybody. Tonight, we are going to take a look at deriving kinematic equations. And in order to do that, um, we have a velocity versus time graph, which I've drawn here. Just a quick reminder of those CVAT problems and kinematic equations, there's five variables involved. S is the displacement, that's the area under this line, okay? U is the starting velocity at time zero. V is the final velocity, I've drawn it here as a dotted line, and that's a time t, all right? A is the acceleration, and that's the slope of the graph. These will always be straight line graphs for kinematic equations. And finally, t is the And so what we're going to do is we're going to develop uh, four equations tonight, each of which have four of these five variables. And then when you follow them through and, and solve kinematic equations, you identify three known variables, one unknown variable which you're asked to find, and that final fifth variable that you're not given and you're not asked for, well, that's the one you cross out, and, and uh, the one that's crossed out, the one that's not involved in the problem, that helps you decide which equation to use. All right, so let's take a look at the first one. First kinematic equation, what we're going to do is we're going to work on the slope of this line. So we have this green line here. I'm going to take my line tool, and I'm going to draw a dotted, yes, a dotted line from here horizontally across like this, okay? And so now what I have in looking at the slope of this line is you have slope equals a rise over a run. So I'll put that in, okay? Slope equals rise over a run. And I'm going to get rid of this line. That's the way that I did it. There we go. Good. Okay. So what's the rise and what's the run? Okay, well, the rise goes from here to here. So it goes from V up at the top down to U. So I'll put on my next line. your rise. Okay, and we'll put that in here, put that in parentheses, make that a T. Okay, and then the run is, is your X component. That's this distance along here. And the run for this problem is time T. Alright, so we get slope equals rise over, uh, uh, rise over run, and slope we said is the acceleration equals V minus U, that's the rise, divided by T is the run. Okay, now all we're going to do is rearrange this equation a little bit. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take T, the run, out of the denominator by multiplying both sides by T. So if you multiply the left side by T, you get A times T, that's one of them, there we go, equals V subtract U. Okay, I just multiply both sides by T, of the T on the right side, and, and I have it on the left side. Okay, and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this U value, and I'm going to bring that over to the other side. So I'm going to get U plus AT B. And that's our first kinematic equation, or more commonly, it's going to be written as V equals U plus AT. All right, that's, that's how you'll see it in your data booklets. This, this one right here is your, um, is your kinematic equation. Okay, what I'll do is I will put a box around it. There we go. No, that's not the one I'm looking for. Hang on. There. All right, so I'll box that up, and we'll come back to it again another time. Another one that I want you to be familiar with later is a box around that is at equals v minus u and that's something that we'll come back to with future ones but right down here this is our first kinematic equation v equals u plus at all right let's build another one okay for this next one we're going to work with the area we're going to work with the displacement the area under this line and one way that i can get the area under this line is i can consider taking a line this. Okay. And then what I get is, I don't even know if this will work. Let's see if I can if I can do this with the paintbrush. What I'll get is I'll get an area here, maybe. Maybe not. 
All right, we'll do it the old-fashioned way. Okay, we get two areas that we're looking for. One is this area right down here. Okay, this is the rectangle. There we go. Okay. And the other one we get is the area of this triangle. And it goes up and comes down. see I'm, my writing is even worse on a, on a mouse trackpad than it is on the smart board itself. So we're looking at the, the total area under this green line is two parts. The first part is this rectangle. You know what, maybe I can make that a little neater. The first part is, is the rectangle. That looks like this. The second part is the triangle. And that looks like maybe not that way. Yeah, you know what? It's too complicated. Um, it looks like this. All right. Making things tougher than I need to. Okay. So let's find some areas. First one's easy. The area of the rectangle. Okay. S is, is my displacement, and it's also my area. The area of the rectangle is found by length times width. Okay, so my width of my rectangle is U. There it is right there. And my length is T. So the area of the rectangle is just U T, U times T. Okay, the triangle is a little tougher. Okay, the triangle, the area of a triangle is half times the base times the height. So and a half times the base of my triangle is t times the height of my triangle. And this is what we looked at with the last one, is v minus u. Okay? But in the last kinematic equation, we said that, and I made a point to say that v minus u, I'll just flip back and show you, v minus u actually equals a times t. So... I can sub that in. All right, S equals UT plus a half times T times AT. Okay, because V minus U equals AT. And then, so to bring it home and then finish off our, our second kinematic equation is just half UT plus 0 0.5 or a half or divided by 2, whatever you like. So I got that T, A, T, there we go. Okay, that's your second kinematic equation. All right, and we'll box that one up, and we'll keep it, and we'll use it later. Our third kinematic equation also deals with the area, but this time what I want to do is I want to take my area, all right, and I'm going to look at this. Going to consider the area of this great big rectangle. All right, and then what I'm going to do is, well, that that area is too big. I want to take this big rectangle and then I want to subtract this triangle. And do I dare start it again? Uh, I'm going to chicken out. I'm just going to use this and say that I want to subtract this same triangle. It's the same size as the last one. All right, I'm going to subtract this area. There we go. All right, so here's what we have. S is our area underneath that green line. S equals the big rectangle, and the big rectangle has a height of V, and it has a length of T. So S equals VT, but this time we're going to subtract the triangle, and the triangle is half times base times height. So 0 0.5 is half times the base. Okay, the base is, is still t, all right? And the height is still v minus u, just like before, all right? 
but same trick as a couple of times ago. D minus U equals A times T. And so, if I plug this in, okay, I'm going to get S is my area, equals BT, the big rectangle, subtract 0 0.5 T times AT. And finally, to bring it home, I have S equals VT minus 0 0.5 AT. And here we go again. I'm going to put this in square. There we go. All right, and that is, what do we have to do? That's our third one, our third kinematic equation. All right. So let's bring it home with the fourth one. And you guys have given me a little bit of education with this one because you've introduced me to what the trapezium and called it a trapezoid and maybe a trapezoid works, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. If you know the formula for a trapezium, then you can just plug it in and you can solve it. You can say that a trapezium has, um, I gotta try and remember how to do this, one side of length u, another side of length v, and a height of t, and you can plug that in the formula, and you can get your area, okay? If you're like me, you don't like to memorize formulas. You don't want to do it. So I'm going to show you another little trick that, I, that I've used in the past. Okay, here's what I do with this last one. Okay, I'm looking for an area, all right? And, and to get that area, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick a line halfway, maybe, there we go, Stick a line halfway in between this and this. All right. Okay. And so what I've done now essentially is I've created a rectangle. And let's take a look at that rectangle. I'm going to make it red. There we go. And the rectangle, it's like this. There. Okay. Now, the thing about this rectangle is this. All right. This triangle that you see right here, okay, this triangle is, is above the line. That's not part of the area under the green line. But this triangle right here, this triangle is, is below the line. So it is part of the area, okay? But it's not part of the red rectangle. So it takes a little bit of a little, little bit of imagination. If you compare these two triangles, if you compare this triangle right here. Triangle over here, I'm hoping you'll see they're the same triangle. Okay, they're congruent triangles. And so, what I could do is I could take this triangle, which is underneath the green line, and I could take it and I could flip it over. And there it goes. And bang, stick it in there. All right. And if I do that, hopefully, you'll see that the area of this red rectangle is in fact the same area as the area under the green line. So let's solve for it. Okay, the area under the rectangle is S. And S equals, okay, well, what's the height of this? You know what, we'll come back to the height in a minute. What's the length of this? The length of this is T. There it goes, all the way across. And the height of this is half way in between u and v. Remember this halfway in between the u and v is an average. Okay, like if you take the number 2 and the number 4. Well, halfway in between 2 and 4 is 3. So this is the average between 2 and 4 is 3. So how do you get average? Well, you get average by taking the two numbers, not the number 9, there we go, taking the two numbers, u plus v, and you divide it by 2. That's how you get average. Okay, that gives you the height of this line. That's just the average velocity between u and v. So, just to wrap it up, clean it up a little bit, s equals uh, plus v times t. Okay, 